This is my sister Sam, and we are heading out on a sailing adventure now that she's here. She's visiting for a few weeks. So she's been doing all the slave labor here on the boat, as you can notice, the galley is nice and painted, but uh, it is time to go out and have an adventure. So we're taking Champ the Tornado out for a week long sailing regatta. It's a motoring start. There's Sam, my motor. The Barefoot Raid is a seven-day race across the southern Gulf Islands in small, beachable, trailerable, unmotored boats. There are ten boats in this year's regatta, and I haven't tested Champ at all. This is the first time I've really taken her out, so it's a big test for me. I also don't know the first thing about sailing a racing catamaran, so I have a lot to learn. We will be supported by our mothership, but otherwise we are beach bumming it the whole way. The raid pirate mentality is highly encouraged. All right, we made it to our first beaching. Um, this is supposed to be our midday stop, but of course nothing's really gone to plan. Uh, we got here pretty good, but um, our support vessel, which had engine problems yesterday, is now today got stuck on the wrong side of the pass, couldn't get through in time. So it's about four or five hours late because it has to wait for the pass to change over. Uh, in the meantime, they try to send their tender over and then their tender had engine problems. Uh, it's just been a, a mess, anyway. Uh, not to mention, there's a hoverboat behind me, unrelated party, capsized, at a spectacular flip, and capsized, completely turtled. And the guys managed to flip it back over and pull it into shore. Nothing's been going according to plan, but the view is fantastic. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're just closing up our campsite. Check it out. Champ is still out there. Hasn't moved a millimeter. And we got a good fresh north wind, which is great because uh, we have a lot of miles to make up for the uh, clusterfuck of yesterday. But that, I, it's on the Mantis M2 anchor. And I'm the only boat who anchored out. Everyone else has been on the beach having their boats actually pummeled all night by this wind that's caught up. And Champ is out there just fine. Now I do have to swim out there and get her, but all that aside, she's in much better condition and hasn't budged an inch. I'm such a fan of that little anchor and uh, I definitely am gonna get a much larger one for old dog when the time comes. <sighs> in the meantime, we're gonna have some breakfast. I'm gonna swim out to that boat, get it, load up and get sailing.
fall day two and this is our spot we're on Galliano Island now right at Montague Bay we've covered basically the length of Valdez and Galliano I got up to 10 knots today which was really a lot of fun all right let me introduce you our captain Greg you can just call him Captain Hippie. Yeah, Captain Hippie's good, yeah. This is the mothership of the Barefoot Raid called the Dame Gracie. And Captain Greg is a bit of a character, I think is how you describe it. And you're running a podcast as well. Yeah. Uh, all about off grid, on all about uh, your lifestyle here and, and also the things you believe in. Somebody once was asked what I do for a living, and they said, I do not much because I'm too busy living for a living, and, and that's true. Yeah. You know what, I, I get by on the bare minimum. For those of you who are not super into the long-winded talking podcast, it's not one of those. You play a lot of music too. I do play a lot of music. And it's yes. all over the place. We've been listening to it the whole time we're hanging out here. <laughs> it's something else from punk rock to fart songs to classical music, it's, you've got everything. Yeah, it? more rock and less talk is what it started out as, but I've kind of a, a got myself you into You yourself a, up tall? It's, a, it's an eclectic mix yeah. of um, music, and most of the radio shows have a theme. Yeah. Uh, the last three months have been about the rainforest yep. and our struggle We're... with Ferry Creek Blockade, and yep. a big shout out to the Rainforest Flying Squad. Uh, Camp Landback, mm -hmm. all those folks up there fighting the good fight to save the last remaining rainforest we have. For those of you, I know a lot of my viewers are from America and maybe you haven't heard of this, but you can check it out. I'll share a link in the description to Greg's podcast here. You can listen to him. He's got a lot more to talk about this and a lot more great music to play and we'll be listening to it the whole week. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Greg. Well, this is my salon area. Yeah, There's a bunk for two back there. And uh, we go into my engine room here. The engine's right underneath me, so this is where I keep all my house batteries. That's my starter batteries there. Right here where all this food is stowed for the barefoot raid uh, is where I want to put my galley, my kitchen area. Uh, maybe have uh, an area here for a desk and maps and computers and stuff. A little mini studio. It's huge. <laughs> Um, yeah. Jillian says he can give us a ride back. Oh, nice. Yeah. He might go for a little sale though too, which we can do. So speaking of ending our capitalist slogs, uh, Blue Eddie sent out this amazing battery pack. This is a 1500 watt hour battery pack. We've actually been using it to run all the freezers and most everything on the boat uh, for several hours now. And we're about just been past halfway through battery through the battery pack, but this is running a huge main ship. So a little thousand watt pure sine wave inverter built in and you get your 12 volt, you get your five volt and a solar charge controller, of course. Everything all in one box. This is the big boy. We're gonna go take this thing to shore, get it charged up on solar and uh, run everything on our second camp there on shore.
Well, after five hours of paddling in strong currents and fitful winds from all directions, with sails full of a light wind and paddling strong, we took a look at our avionics and realized we were making 1.7 knots backwards. So we called the mothership and called it quits. And it's not all bad news. They got hot coffee. Call me names, but look me I'm really keeping a close eye on this tornado called Cheese. She's like my mentor, exactly what I'd like Champ to be eventually. Spinnaker pole, outrigger benches, and a seasoned, competent skipper at the helm. It's no surprise that this boat is always in the lead. on Bedwall Harbor in South Pender Island. So after refilling our bilge with cheap beer and sneaking into the resort to get a free shower, we got ourselves a tasty, healthy dinner and set up the camp on the catamaran. I really love this setup. I'm definitely gonna take this tarp into the sewing room and make a tent out of it. This marks our most southerly point, and we're already halfway through the raid. To this point, we've only been ranking about 6th or 7th every day, and dead last on the day we had to get towed. However, we're making modifications to our rig, and we're getting faster and faster. As the wind creeps up on us from the south, we manage to make first 5th, then 4th, then finally 3rd. Such a fool, yeah, I feel so naive, but I know someday soon I'm gonna find some relief, ain't that right? Sometimes I'm blue when the day finally ends, I watch the sun go down.
average speed of 6.9 on one leg and then 7.4 on the next, and then a top speed of 13.1 knots on the first leg, and then finally in the last leg on the last day, 14.9. Of course, all this speed doesn't come without consequences. The boat has taken an absolute beating and there's a lot I need to fix. From soft decks to a full-on crack between the deck and the hull that's at least two feet long. And I think I'll be adding a trolling motor to this boat because I don't want to paddle like I paddled this week. My back is killing me. After a rain-soaked day, we have one final night of camping on DeCourcy Island, not far from Gabriola, and then we're headed home for the finale. We had high hopes of beating all the monohulls in this trip, but it turns out that a ballastless monohull in the hands of a competent skipper who knows his boat well is incredibly fast. We got absolutely trounced by people in their 60s in dinghies. But we were the newcomers, and we didn't know our boat at all, and we didn't know how to do this at all. So it's not surprising. We learned a lot, and we got a lot faster. By the end, we were consistently threatening the podium. I'm really happy with our performance, especially everything we've learned. I'm really proud of my little boat, and I'm very proud of my sister for doing so well. Of course, on the last leg, we had the dog fall overboard, we had my cell phone fall overboard, and then I get home to edit this footage and find that the audio has been wrecked this whole trip, and now I have to do this funny little voiceover. I'm sore, I'm salt scabbed, and I'm filthy, but I had a great time. Back in the workshop, guys, feeling fresh, feeling clean. I got a shower, I'm well rested, and I'm just finishing up this episode. And there were a bunch of clips in the episode I recorded about the Blue Eddy and how that was whole working for us on the trip. And none of those make any sense without audio. So I'm gonna take a little bit of time here at the end of the episode to talk more about that battery bank and explain to you my experience working with it. That battery is what you would call like a full-time off-grid battery pack. The ones I reviewed in the past were kind of like weekender ones, ones you can tuck into very small setups and very light. This one is not so light. This is the equivalent of about two deep cycle lead acid batteries. Um, it doesn't weigh that much, but that that's its capacity really. And when you think of that, then it's light. But I mean, when you look at it, it's just a little blue box, right? You pick it up and man, is it ever skookum heavy. It uses a lot of cells inside to get that 1500 watt hour capability. Now that 1500 watt hours is a lot of juice. Um, we were able to run uh, our coffee maker on shore. So we were able to make a huge, big coffee, like uh, what do you call it? Those, those big percolator coffee makers. We ran that on shore. Um, we didn't really have enough time for the battery bank to fully recharge just off the two panels that I brought. Um, but it can take up to 500 watts of solar, so you can put 500 watts panels on there instead of just two. And of course, if it's set up all day long, it'll recharge. Whereas I was setting it up kind of at the tail end of every day and angling the panels to get the most juice out of it. It just takes a while to put 1500 watt hours back into a battery pack. We were able to recharge all the VHF radios, all the USB devices, everyone's phones and tablets and stuff like that. Um, my camera batteries, of course, that's all like light stuff, but running actual appliances, we ran the freezers on board for quite a while. We ran the percolator coffee, all that kind of stuff. So it is a huge amount of juice and I'm definitely gonna keep it on this boat 
because as a backup emergency power pack, I also I have the 12 volt, which I'm probably just gonna use the battery as a 12 volt, but in emergencies, I can flick the inverter on there and use it to power all kinds of appliances and the chargers for my main battery, stuff like that. Um, the thing you wanna consider before you buy this particular pack is that thousand watt pure sine wave inverter a lot of larger appliances are gonna demand 1500 watts and this cannot deliver. This gives out about, I think it topped out at 1290 or something or about, just about 1300 on surge power. Um, so for instance, my compressor, uh, while it's running only burns 800 watts, but that start um, was enough for it, it like demanded 1500 watts and it, you know, it would fire two out of every three times, but that third time it wouldn't fire, it would just, flat out so something to consider blue eddy makes a lot of different models with a lot of different battery sizes and a lot of different inverter sizes so really you want to scale whatever system you get based on what your demands are and for the inverter i would say whatever your largest appliance is you get an inverter that can do that appliance with maybe a little bit of headroom so that if you're say charging your laptop or running a couple of other small demand stuff at the same time it doesn't just shut the whole system down but it is portable and it is so handy having that portability being able to just grab it and go at a moment's notice um, i would never have been able to bring a portable battery pack that could do everything and and bring it on a trip like i just did a few years ago so this is really cool technology i really dig it this battery bank will be a permanent feature inside of my boat. I am definitely keeping it and using it for years and years to come. I'm excited to have it and I really want to thank Blue Eddy for sending it out. There is an affiliate link in the description if you guys want to check this pack out or any of the other packs that Blue Eddy makes and they make a lot of packs. So please check them out. Link in the description. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for Blue Eddy for sponsoring today's episode. I'm going to go sleep now. It's my time today. I don't think I'm just as I see No, it's not